How did you get into being an electrician? Oh, how did I get into being an electrician? Um, I worked for an um, electrical firm doing admin and then ended up getting promoted to accounts manager. And then nice. when I saw how much the boys were making for changing <laughs> light bulbs, I was shocked. And that is when I said, you know what? I'm going to be an electrician. Wow. So I said to my boss and everyone else, I was like, guys, I'm going to be an electrician. They said, uh, no, you're not. You're a woman. You can't do that. And that is what made me want to be like, you know what? Because you said I can't, I definitely will. So I went, got qualified, and um, you know, within a few years, I was more qualified than most of my colleagues. Wow. And even up to this point now, I have a, a manager who was managing me then. He comes up to me for advice and for help. Wow. Yeah, I'm more qualified <laughs> than him now. So that's, that's brilliant. And how long does it take to, to get qualified so you can go out and kind of start doing the job so, by yourself? Yeah, so there's um, different routes. There yep. is a fast track route that can take three months. But oh, that right. one I wouldn't advise unless, you know, you've got previous experience or um, unless you're very organized because yeah. it's fast track. Literally every day something new is thrown at you. Um, and then there is the apprenticeship course um, that takes years, can take three to four years. And with myself, I've done um, like adult college um, that took me three years and then I got pregnant and then it took me an extra year. So it took about four years, I'd say, for me to finally become a fully qualified electrician. <laughs> Okay. And what would your advice be for someone who's, you know, either young or just wants a change of profession and wants to be an electrician? I'd say go for it. Because just within being an electrician, there are so many things you can do. You can work night times, you can work day times, you can work only weekends, you can be self-employed, you can be employed, you can create your own firm or you can work for somebody else. You can do new builds, you can do um, tenanted, so you get to interact with tenants or you can be by yourself every day just working on a building site. There are so many different variations of what you can do just within that one field with that one qualification, which is amazing. If you want to do something and then within that keep switching while still having the same qualification, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's quite a, scope of, quite a large scope of work that's available yeah. as, as an electrician, definitely. Mm. And what, what's your favourite? Right now, yeah. uh, if I'm being completely honest, the easy stuff. Anything that just includes my iPad <laughs> and a pen and a pa piece of paper, if, if that. Um, so that may, means um, testing or checking other people's work. So I'll get someone else to do the hard work and then I yeah. come in and I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Here's your certificate. I get paid and I keep it moving. Whereas before I wanted to get hands on and do the hard work. But now I'm sort of enjoying just get paid and go. <laughs> yeah, I guess because you already know how to do the hard work. So yeah. you might as well kind of take so it I'm easy a bit. I'm kind of bored of it now, like being dusty and this and that doesn't really appeal to me anymore. But again, <laughs> I can always come back to that at any point. Have you ever done um, call outs, night work? Yeah, I've done that quite a lot of years, quite a lot of years. And it was one instance um, where um, <laughs> even yourself, we, we <laughs> got, um, um, we had a predicament with the same lady. There was a lady that attacked me Wow. Uh, I was doing a call out, went on the stay. She literally jumped on me, was trying to snatch my bag, trying to take stuff out. And I was recording a, a video for my Instagram at the time, actually. I was like, hey, guys, I'm just doing a call out. And this lady just attacking me and she was, you know, trying to steal my bag, which had tools. But she thought it was a bag that had a wallet in it. Um, wow. So these are the kind of experiences, you know, that I went through working out of hours. I'd work literally every night for about three, four years. Wow. Every night, covering every single estate that you can think of in London. Until so, early hours of the morning, yeah. <laughs> a lot of crazy stories to tell with that one. So with, with that lady in, in the question, was she a, a customer? Or was she kind of random person? That was, she's somebody was that's very well known in that estate for harassing people and stealing and, and stuff. Right. So she's very well known uh, and I was just her victim that night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a... So do electricians um, get a lot of hag, a lot of kind of things happening, weird things happening? Yeah, I think it's more to do with the kind of estates that I have to work in. Yeah. I work on a lot of estates where there are a lot of uh, vulnerable people or, you know, um, drug addicts and things like that. That's, you know, these kind of sensitive estates where it gets quite dangerous, you know, a, a young woman out there by herself yeah. at two, three in the morning, um, you know, especially if you've never been there before. Um, so I think you can easily become a target yeah. for, you know, these people kind of harassing you because they don't know why you're there. They see you in the estate at two in the morning, God knows doing what. So, you know, they get curious and yeah. What's it like being a woman in the industry? 
being a woman in this industry, I think is amazing. I love it. Um, so at first it was quite uncomfortable. You know, you've got a lot of people who feel like you shouldn't be there. I've had instances, you know, where I've shown up and I'm holding my ladder, I'm holding my bag in the other hand. And um, I had this guy who opened the door and he's like, oh, hey, yeah, come in, come in. And he showed me the baby. And I'm like, okay, nice baby, but where is your fuse box? And he's like, what, why do you need the fuse box? And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so tired from this new baby that I just assumed you was a midwife. I did not even think that. Wow. I did not even see the ladder. My brain just cancelled <laughs> it out. So, you know, I've had loads of these kind of situations where I'll show up and they'll be like, oh, is your, is your husband coming? Or um, should I shut the door? Is your husband behind you? And I'm like, no, it's, you know, it's just me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, all these kind of... Um, yeah, all these kind of assumptions and stereotypes. Um, or, you know, if I'm on site carrying something heavy, the, the traditional men will be like, oh my gosh, do you need a hand? Do you need a hand? Don't worry, we'll help you carry it. At first, yeah. I found it uncomfortable. But recently, I've just been like, oh, thank you. Could you mind getting that for me? And that actually, there's some <laughs> more in the car. Here's the keys. And, you know, they don't mind doing that for you. So recently, I've started sort of um, allowing them to, to, you know, help me out. <laughs> you should make them do half the job. That's I've had that do. before. <laughs> it was chasing a wall. So, you know, you've got a drill um, grooves into the wall to put the cable in. Yep. And the guy was like, oh, you know, a woman should have been doing this hard work. And I was like, okay. He's like, no, don't worry, I'll do it. And then I was like, okay, here, here, here. And he spent about two hours doing all that work for me. <laughs> and then I was like, yep, I'm done for the day. See you later. And I went home, got paid for the day, and he had to do the rest of his work. I, thanks, man, if you're watching this. But <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fair enough. Is it dangerous? Because I've... All right, I've, I've Personally, I bought a, ha a flat about a year and a half ago. And I, I try to do everything myself as much as I can because I want to save money. But electrics, I won't touch it. Mm. I'm just scared. Is it, is it dangerous? Can 100%. it be dangerous? It's, it's something, imagine it's something that can bite you, but you can't see it. Mm. So you don't know what you're touching. You can touch your sink and get a crazy electric shock just because you've done something wrong along the way. These things are possible. You can touch your washing machine and get a shock just because you've messed about with your electrics. So these things are very serious. I've had a few shocks myself, you know, when, when I was learning and there's been instances where someone's done something wrong. And I was left for about half an hour with my hands dead, like this limp. I couldn't lift my hands up. Wow. Like it, so, you know, an electric shock is very serious, um, especially if you're not expecting it and you don't know how somebody's body might react. So it's, it's a serious thing and I would yeah, definitely advise people not to mess around. Uh, with, with electrics so call, call a professional definitely, definitely. call the professionals <laughs> <laughs> so what's is that the craziest shock you've had where, where you kind of I was still that was one of the worst ones so it was just um uh somebody labeled it wrong i thought i turned it off i did wow. a double check which is actually one of the main things you have to do double check i didn't my fault and i grabbed one cable grabbed the other to pull it and that basically creates a circle around your whole body oh and, so you're part of the circuit yep, yeah and oh. i pulled it and i couldn't let go because your hands your muscles contract so I was stuck just receiving the shock until it somehow just slipped out of my hands and yeah. So wow. it's quite bad. So something like that could have, could have killed me basically. So since then I've been like 100% always check, double check, make sure you tell everyone, double check before you touch electrics or for a professional. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Yeah. Sometimes you got to kind of learn on the job, you know, in hard ways, yeah. un unfortunately. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, so I've, I've personally, um, I used to work as an estate agent or, and I used to sell kitchens and go into houses. So I'm sure you go into quite a lot of different houses. Mm. Have you ever seen anything crazy in the house that you've been to or is just complete mess or anything like that? <laughs> so there is, there is actually one thing that I ended up posting on TikTok as a joke. When I first got TikTok, I didn't know what it was. I was like, look, let me just post a video of me on my you know, regular day at work. Yeah. And um, I went to this house, it's empty, it's a void property. So someone's moved out and I never know what it'll be like. And a lot of the times I'll be the first person to go in since someone moved out and, you know, filed it as a void property. So the key will be outside and I'll get the key. And I kind of opened the door and it looked very full of stuff. So I was like, okay, let me just get my phone out and just record at the same time, just in case, you know, someone pops out or whatever else. And as I'm recording it, you know, I'm kind of like panning across the different things and... I ended up posting it online. And after I posted it, people pointed out, like, what's that on the table? Oh, and no. I zoomed in, it was drugs. And they're like, what's that on the bed? And it was actually a knife covered in something red. I, I could have been ketchup, could have been something, I don't know. And then there was just crazy things all over the place. It's actually, like, it's a TikTok video that went viral and a lot of people have seen it. Um, and then in the end, I ended up going into one of the bedrooms. This is a giant tent. And I'm like, oh my gosh, indoor camping fans. But obviously, <laughs> I, I don't so. know what they was in with a camping tent, a giant camping tent inside their room. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the most um, 
interesting things I've probably seen, but there's been so many, so many interesting things I've, I've come across that I cannot even share on social media, you know? Yeah, no, I can imagine. <laughs> so at, at the time you had no idea? At the time, I was just recording as I went along. And because there's so much and I go to these properties all the time, yeah. I didn't pick up the little small details. It's only after I posted it, it started going viral. I went to bed, I woke up and had like 1.2 million views. Wow. I was like, what, what, what's just happened? <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that, was, that was crazy. Would you recommend uh, being an electrician to other women, in the, well, to women? Yeah. Would you say it's a good job and you'd recommend it? Yeah, I definitely recommend it because especially um, things like, you know, when we had the lockdowns of COVID, mm. everybody was at home. I was out working. I had so much work that I was making, at, one of the months I made 10 grand. Like, oh, wow. because it was so much work. And it's one of those jobs where people need you. Mm. They need you, right? And can AI replace me? I, I don't think so anytime soon. So yeah. it's one of those things where if you get into it, you basically, you know, when they say you'll be set for life in a way where, yeah, you consistently have work. And it's a, it's a skill that you can use, you know, to help your family, friends, as well as make money, help yourself. So, yeah, I definitely recommend women getting into it if, they, if they're interested. Oh, that's good. Um, so 10 grand in a month. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was my best month that year. That was my best month. I mean, that's pretty good. You can go on holiday. You can buy whatever you want. Yeah, yeah I ended up just wasting it because <laughs> it was just like an unexpected thing. Because um, what happened is out of the seven electricians at the company, everyone was scared. And they're like, look, we know you're crazy. Mm. Do you want to just be the only one that goes out? I said, okay, that's fine, but you've got to pay me like seven people's wages. They said, no, that's ridiculous. We'll pay you three, three wages. Nice. Um, and you can just do whatever while everyone else is on fellow. And I was like, okay, sure. So I covered the whole of England. I was doing 500 miles a day. Wow. My palm was bruised from changing gears. Like it was a gear band <laughs> capped at 70. So I was literally in the morning, I'd go to Great Yarmouth. Then in the afternoon, I'd be in Ellsbury, finish wow. in Southend and do call outs in Enfield and then go back home in Peterborough. Wow. So I was actually doing 500 miles a day. I was getting my van service like every month. It was ridiculous, but I was making like 10 grand a month. So it, pay, it paid off, yeah. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> yeah, but I bought crazy things like an inflatable kayak. Like why? I don't know. <laughs> Spontaneous purchases, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And do you, do you live in Peterborough then? Or? No, that was just a one-off thing I tried. It was not for me. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it was just too quiet. I lived in like a little village and every time I'd come home at nine in the afternoon, you know, everyone's like opening their curtains, like, what's she coming home so late for? And then people are knocking at four o'clock in, on a Sunday, four o'clock, knocking on the door. Can you turn that music down a bit? I'm oh, used to London. Wow. You can do anything at any time. Yeah. No one cares. Yeah. So that was, that was too much. So I moved back after like five <laughs> months. <laughs> oh, fair enough. So it's kind of like old people and, you know. Yeah, just yeah. the locals, little village, yeah. No, oh, fair enough. And what's a typical week for you, like in the, being an electrician? Typical week being an electrician. So I've taken the most of the summer off. I'm not going to lie. I've not worked for most of the summer as an electrician. Uh, but before that, or let's say today, actually, what, what did I do today? Um, I woke up, dropped my son off to school. Then I went to do um, two tests. So I tested the property is safe. Got to produce the paperwork, which I'm going to do tonight. Sometimes I do it on site on the iPad. Um, second job I did the same and then the third job was an emergency call out for someone's garden lights not working and they were actually like this really like really cool producer and their house was so cool and it was just one light that wasn't working so I disconnected it told him look um, I'll send you a quote for a new one and that was me done for the day and that was like what two o'clock and then for the rest of the day I'd it's not bad. oh I tried to do more work but then when I got there um, it, it was for one of the council properties um, they had to board it up and because they did, they covered the key safe, couldn't find the keys and then it was so long trying to find it that I said, you know what, I'm just, just going to call it, call it a day and being a self-employed electrician, I'm allowed to call it a day at any point of the day and just keep it moving. So yeah, that, that's what today looked like and a lot of the days look very similar, mm. just sort of um, jobs booked back to back um, and the flexibility to reschedule at any point. So that, that was an emergency, you called you out for a garden light? They're rich. It's an emergency. That's not an emergency, is it? I mean, to me, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, when you have money, what is an emergency? Your lights don't work. You want to sit in your garden. Yeah. Your lights don't work. It's an emergency. And you have to pay a bit extra for emergency, don't you? Yeah. <clears throat> they, they don't mind. Um, ah, some enough. of my clients, so I've got a variation of clients. I've got some clients who, um, you know, they, they don't have money. So some of the um, like housing associations I work for, yep. vulnerable tenants, you know, they, they, they don't pay for the call-outs. 
So they will call you for anything random. Yeah. At two o'clock in the morning, they will say there's no electrics. I'll show up and they'll be like, oh, when I said that, I meant that light in the hallway has not worked for four months. Wow. And I'm like, you know, I just drove an hour here, but that's fine. And then because we don't replace things on out of hours, I just take a picture and someone else comes out in the morning. Wow. Um, so, you know, these people don't pay. Um, and then I've got people that are sort of in the middle where, you know, they are, their landlord covers it. And then you've got people that have so much money where they're just like, look, I don't care how much it is. I need it done. Like now it's an emergency. How much do you want to charge them? You can charge them anything. They just like throw money at you. So there's a, a whole different variation of clients you can get. Crazy. That's pretty good, yeah.